Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the Revere History Museum for today's uh, presentation. Um, I met today's speaker in a, a brief stint on the Revere Cultural Council uh, and got to know her as a person who's definitely um, you know, committed to contributing to and enhancing uh, the culture in Revere. Uh, she's going to tell us all about her Chinese language and culture club that she's been running in the city for the last uh, year or two. Uh, and after the presentation here, we're going to move into our multicultural room. Uh, and she's going to show us a couple items that she very uh, generously loans to the museum. So thank you all for being here. Jin Lee. Thank you, Brayden. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, uh, Rivia History Museum and uh, uh, RSCHP and Rivia TV. Thank you so much for making this happen. And thank you all of you to come in your rainy day. And uh, summer is, yeah, that's just so hard for people to organize the event. I very appreciate your time to be here. And we hope we can make it meaningful for everyone. So today, I'm happy to introduce Chinese Language and Culture Club, which we have almost two years in Revere. And we want to introduce you who we are, and why we do, and what and how did we do for the past two years. So who we are. Uh, my name is Qing Li. I'm native Chinese. I come here for seven years and a week. And uh, I'm really happy to have this back to my journey to US when I was still a PhD candidate back to 13 years ago and come, came to US as a Fulbright uh, scholar uh, visiting in Harvard University for one year. And that before I, uh, my career teaching in a university in China for six years. Um, yeah, so Fulbright, the experience is like a seed in my mind. I always think, think how we can become a cultural ambassador between different cultures like a Chinese culture and a U.S. culture. And that's always keeping in my mind how I can contribute to that. And then our stage of life, I came here as a pregnant woman, and this Bowen, my younger one, was born here. And even though we are now all settled in the U.S., but we still want to keep our culture because we believe our culture is so tragic for us, and all the great books, I don't want to just, we can read them and they cannot. So that's why we keep learning Chinese at home, and uh, they are, yeah, we, what we are doing during the pandemic is study Chinese, like half hour, one hour at home, and at that time I feel, oh, maybe we can do it for more kids, for the community, then so then, that's the idea, and that's just a rough idea, not even a plan. And uh, during, like I said, during the pandemic, we have a lot of challenges, but also have a good thing is the virtual learning capacity. Everyone starts from zero to learn how to use Zoom. And my older one, Albert, Zoom school. <laughs> And we are together with him sit, sit there and to see how the teacher handled the 20 students in the classroom. And my younger ones skip the preschool, but we have a lot of chance to join some virtual play groups in Revere or even outside of the state. So I think we are prepared, even though it is a crisis, the global crisis, but we are prepared for using Zoom or technology to make this opportunity for more people. So that's the third reason we think we, we have the capacity to do that. And the last one is do the right thing. We are here like first generation, and I start in US as a student and then come here, still feel like English is very limited. I start with uh, holding bow on my here arm and take my ESL class. And that's our start point. But all we surround with all the support from our community, from the people around. So we, oh, we, even though we are so need support, but we can contribute something. 
Everyone can contribute something. We don't want to we feel lack as a second citizen or something like that. We feel like even though we are still learning, learning English, but we are native Chinese, maybe we can do something, take advantage of what we have. So we try to think, oh, maybe that's a do the right thing, and especially during the pandemic, really isolate with our tiny room and we think uh, we need to open our door. Even though during the pandemic we cannot open the door, but we can open our Zoom and let more children in. So that's the whole idea behind why we have this. But even though there are so many reasons, if without all the partners I want to share here, we cannot make it. First of all, Riviera Cultural Council. I was luckily in, on the board of the Riviera Cultural Council, and Brayden was there too, and I have this idea, but not sure if we can do it. It's just an idea for many years, but how we can make it happen. So, but I'm so lucky, the whole board give me the biggest support. Paul, to make sure our documents are, um, look good, and Catherine is the one to look at every language that can doable for, for in Revere community. She has a lot of experience in the events in Revere. So I got so many great feedback. I think that's, that's the biggest reason we can make that happen in 2022. And the Revere Public School, that's the picture. We, we start from March 2020. Revere Public School District put us on the website of the community resource, and really, that's a big support and help us do the recruitment. So really appreciate. And we also want to thanks to the MACIRR. They donate three laptops for us, and without laptop, we cannot do the Zoom meeting and have everything. So really appreciate all our partners, all the support from our community. And what did we do? There's really a lot. First of all, we want to have a group of people. At the beginning, we saw children. This year, we start to brought that to adults too. So a group of people, we call that smart club. S means supportive. We want no judging. Everybody support each other. It's a learning process, and everybody, even though, no matter what your age is, we are almost the same level to learn new languages. So supportive. And M means a growth mindset. You know something, I know something. We need to open our mind to accept new ideas, new cultures, new languages. So open your mind. A represents active. We don't want to just have one meeting the whole year. I don't think that's the way to learn a language. So that's why we have every week, weekly meeting on every Fridays. And the arm is respectful. Really the challenge of some, just the boundary and something you don't know. But what we can do is respectful for the ideas you don't know, the cultures, the things, the activities you don't know. And T is on time. I think that's something we are very strict with our group is on time. And because we, our meeting is 30 minutes online and for children, and I know everybody's busy schedule and the, all the parents need to prepare a lot of other things. So we hope we can start on time and end on time, make our time efficiently. So that is uh, at the very beginning, the first meeting back to January 2022, we have that. And for the following year, January 20. 23, we have re announced that and get feedback from the group. And this is norms just to emphasize we are learning new things and making friends and hope everyone can actively listening and sharing because it's a learning opportunity for everyone and be respectful, friendly, and honest. You know, you know. You don't know, just say, I don't know. And start and end on time. So this is what we did 2022. We held 35 free Zoom meetings on language learning and cultural exploring for children. So at that moment, we just opened that for children because uh, um, 
I have two children, and my day job as a program manager working with families. Our um, program is for parents and the children and um, build the leadership in the community. So I'm very comfortable to working with families and have the really challenging experience, but I learned a lot from my boys. So we have that 35 free Zoom meetings. And all the meetings we record for the group, for people in the group who missed, because Friday afternoon is like what the summer is so challenging and we don't want anyone miss some learnings because everything we are just built up, level up, built on each, each, each meetings. So we have all the meetings re uh, record and send the link to the group who to the people who are missed the meeting on that day. And we create, at the very beginning, we create our Facebook, we have our Facebook group, and have our Facebook page. And for now, we have uh, 155 members in our private group, and that group, many of them are students come, come and go, that happens, but we have 155 in the group. And on our uh, Facebook page, we have 519 followers, and we share all the information, what we did every week on that page. That's 2022. And following 2023, we have 30 uh, meetings scheduled. We have already did 20 for now, and then we will have 10 staff from September to November for the 10 weeks of the meetings. And also we try to, because of the feedback from parent, parents who sit with their children, and they, they just be there, even though we said, oh, this is only for children, but they'll be there, they'll ask, uh, ask some questions. Oh, what's how to write down one in Chinese? Or some say hello, how to say hello in Chinese? That kind of question keep come to us. Then so, oh, Maybe we can open a little bit to the adults. So from this year, not only for children, but also for their parents or any adults who are interested. And also two small groups were created according to the level. The PE is Chinese alphabet small group that is more for beginners who want to learn Chinese from the very beginning. And for the Chen Yu idiom small group is more about history and culture things that for, for the people who has already in the medium level and can speak daily conversation but want to know deeper about our culture. So that's two groups according to the level. And that is a lesson we learned from 2022 because if we just have one group, it's really hard to balance. Some of the children, very old ones, they can just have a speech like what I did in Chinese here, but some of them just start from zero. So I think this better for if we continue, maybe just divide according to their level and divide that to the two groups. And also, we are so happy to be here today because one of the mission for our 2023 is bring multicultural education to the community engagement. And when Braden reached out to me, he said, oh, that's wonderful. That's what really we, we are aimed to do that and hope we can find more opportunity to do. That's for 2023. So, we... Uh, I just mentioned we have the meetings scheduled and how we decide what topic to cover. I didn't make the decision. At the first meeting back to January 28, 2022, that's the, our first meeting. And in that meeting, I make a jumble and ask all the people in the group make something, signals on, on that jumble to see what you want to have. So this is the collection of the topics at the first meeting, like some culture, double nice festival, Chinese New Year, mid autumn festival, and some like our daily life, how to grading, and what, how to say the days, the months, the numbers, the times, or some other 
cultural things like the Chinese food, dumpling, moo cake, or some other things like the Great War, the King, or the dynasty of the, uh, the, the China, the history. So, so that's our start point, and we are so happy we collect all this topic and that make we can to see what we want to offer because we want to hear from them and to see how we can best offer uh, their, their interest. In so, and uh, for each topic, after we figure out what the topic will be and how, how we can learn the topic together, this is a framework that on the second meeting. And we have this and the ask questions is the top thing. The ask question is the way to learn. Maybe we just see the boys keep asking different questions. How old are you? Anything questions. That's, that's really awesome because that's the way we learn. And for every topic, like Chinese New Year, what is Chinese New Year? And where did it start? And who celebrated Chinese New Year? Why people in Asian countries celebrate Chinese New Year? And which which part have difference, and when is Chinese New Year? What's the activity? How people celebrate Chinese New Year? All these questions, if you figure out some of the W and H, then you know. You know the activity, you know the culture. So that's the way we learned, and that's some part of my background as a research in university for many years. I really think they built the, the thinking, the way of thinking. There's always have something new to learn, but how to learn? That's something you need to start from the very beginning. How to learn new things, not only for the language, not only for Chinese, but all the, always have something new things to learn. So, okay, I will back there. We have a little bit activities, and I, I know there's some, um, maybe no Chinese before, but I don't want you just to leave without any Chinese word today. So at least three words. We start very easy one. I don't want to put you hard positions. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese and Arabic is supposed to be the hardest language, but today I want to go easy. So we are, maybe we can learn some numbers. So, Much more than 10. 
Oh, before I go that, I may just uh, ask, can anyone let me know how to write 23? 23? 23? No? Okay, forward. No, no, use that. I only have one page. You told me that you did one page. I need to be very smart to use that one page. Okay. Yes, we'll make it correct. 23, 2 is on the 10th place, and 3 on the 1 place. So, when you come back to see 3, it's 3 here. And the 20, R means 2, and it's on the 10th place. So, 23 is 23. Mm -hmm. And what? <laughs> Not ready? <laughs> so let's see. Oh, no. Okay, I just can't hold him. So 99. Any guess? 99. The way we 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 learn 23. How to write? So you put nine twice, twice and plus sign. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you see how how smart you are. 99. Yeah. Because the one place nine and the ten place nine and the ten here. So you're not not learning any new words just from this ten. But you can write down any Chinese word and 100, right? From, from 1 to 10, you can get all the numbers from 1 to 99. Yeah, what? I know 100. Okay, then come to next. Come to next, a magical word. This is a magical word. 100. I know what you're saying. Let me say oh, it's not table. <laughs> so, 100, 100. So, my question is, we have already then 23, 23. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I know today's biggest challenge is this, not <laughs> from you. Know, we, we, we try to like use half hour at least to try to compute, but now the big challenge is bigger. So, only one word, you, then you will know. Can I help? Can I help? Yeah, put there. Can you see that? January is the first month of the year. And in Chinese, it's the first word is yi. So, at yi yue means January. The same. February. February. Yeah, you can do that. February. Easy than English, right? English, we need to remember all the letters. But in Chinese, 10, 10 number and this magical word. Er yue means February. San yue means March. Si yue means fifth month. Yeah, means April. Wu yue means May. Liu yue June. Qi yue July. They are getting excited with this. Ba yue August. Jiu yue September. Shi yue October. And Shi Yi and we can squeeze Shi Yi Shi Er. Shi Yi just a Shi and Yi. Eleven just a Shi. Shi plus one, so it's Shi Yi. And the twelve is Shi plus two, Shi Er. So the month November is Shi Yi Yue, and December is Shi Er Yue. Okay. You know what the month in Chinese now. Okay, let's see if we have more magic words. The days of the week. So, another magic word is. So, means the week. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, the first day of the week, we say it's Monday. Means so e, but so need to put ahead. So e means Monday, and so r means Tuesday. Yeah. So san means Wednesday. So si means Thursday, and so Friday. Okay. Any questions? So you have to learn the symbol. For the magic word. Yeah, you have to initially learn. So you have to initially learn the symbol for the magic word, and then when you put it next to the number, the plus you match with the this second the week, character. the third week, fourth week. Yes. That's yeah. the character. Yeah. Yeah. Character. yeah. yeah. You need to know learn that the there's, there's some words that the, you see. At the end, I would like to show you that every number is not easy to learn, but we can make it. Understand Stuff like it. yeah, connected things that because children they they want to. We cannot just do. It's hard. It's hard. No, then nobody will do that. See, when you, I said symbol because I I related that graphic image to a symbol mm. as opposed to a character. Yeah. Because you use the word character when you're using language instead mm. of symbol. Yeah. Symbol's not the right term. Um, symbol. Some people use when we learn the alphabet. Alphabet, like in the alphabet, Chinese alphabet, people use the Chinese symbol to describe the alphabet. We are uh, what I share here is the character, is how it writes. Right, okay. And we have another system to learn how to pronounce. So that is Chinese symbol or Chinese um, we call pinyin and Chinese alphabet. But, but I think it's easier to learn when you see what they're related to. Yeah. So you do pick it up a little bit. Understand what they what they're supposed to symbolize. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Okay, okay. <laughs> What's the question? So, uh, what about the name? Oh, okay. I will, I will, I will introduce my name later. How to write that in Chinese? Okay, that's something we uh, learn together in our club. But not so quickly like this. I was assuming everyone is so genius here. <laughs> so we learn so fast. And 
But what I want to say is for our club, because we working with children, we don't want to put it so difficult to scare them away. So we try to make that fun and really relate to our daily life. Like how to say the number. You, you have to say the numbers in, yeah, in our daily life and how do you say the weeks, the months, and also, then I, I don't want to put too much magic words to use today, but then another magic word is the end. Means clock. Like one clock is that means one clock. Two clock, two, 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 three o'clock. So some of the words may build up on what we learned and we can easily to learn a whole bunch of the topic and relate it to our daily life. So that's, uh, yeah, a little bit of activities. Sorry if I overwhelming you with all the Chinese words. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one to 10 um, numbers and we start from there to introduce all the things related to our daily life. And this is the month which I just show you on the, on the board. And uh, the funny part for when we have this back to 2022 is at the beginning I thought um, we really want to engage different culture. Even though we call the Chinese language and the culture club, but if we have any other culture can together with us make it multicultural, that will be fantastic. So at the beginning of back to 2022, we have a mother who speaks Spanish and she is co-host with me. We make every topic three languages at that, yeah, back to that year and because the, the children's activities and the time conflict, we cannot continue in 2023, but we open all the opportunity. If there's any other language you want to, we work together, make the Chinese language culture to be a more inclusive multicultural group. We are more than happy to do that. So that is how the, the month of the year and why we have this slice in three language, the story behind. And this is the time, I just mentioned, just the end. You can to, to talk about any time in, uh, in Chinese. And the other topic we covered, like a daily routine, uh, get up, breakfast, lunch, go to school, watch TV, do homework, go home, sleep, all these words. And this is, well, this is the Chinese pinyin, is the alphabet. And this is uh, the way people to learn how to pronounce it. And this is the character, of Chinese character, Hanzi. And here, maybe all you know, <laughs> say hello in Chinese. It's ni hao, ni hao. Maybe you s s hear people to say that, ni hao. And thank you. OK, why there are so many hands here? OK, <laughs> for one. Xie xie ni. Or xie xie is enough to ni is emphasize you. Xie xie you. Xie xie ni. And xie xie, thank you. Thus, we cover much more than this in our meetings, but yeah, this is just so important, I think, for new learners, is just the way to open this. Uh, Chinese to them. And we also learned whether, don't look too much on that, so many words. <laughs> they haven't needed like one year to go over all these words. Just introduce, we covered the weather in our um, uh, club and the seasons and uh, some, um, some idioms related to the seasons and the place park, police station, restaurant, bank, supermarket, hospital, school, library, movie theater. Uh, we have, we try to make it more serious. So like learn about China, that series. We have um, like 10 meetings 
to cover, to introduce, to use different books to introduce Chinese about everything about China from the books. And um, we have, for this year, this is from the recently we finished one series about learn about China from these four books. Even though we just show four, four books, but actually at least 10 times of four, four books we car carried back from library to our home. And these two boys are the reviewer to review all the books and to say, oh, this book is good, or this book is not good. So, and then we designed these four books as the books lead this uh, series about China. And for this series, we really try to cover all the big things in China and in Chinese culture, like the Nazis and some in innovations, definitely food or some activities, and they introduce some um, Qing Dynasty, Han Dynasty, back the history of China. So that's why I mentioned we, our group, we have some very advanced students there. They are not just ready to learn ER sign these simple things. I need to make sure the, the group is like inclusive for beginners, but also have some very advanced. So that's some part that's always challenging maybe for some of them, but it really is a good opportunity for everyone to learn something. So that's for our, and also the map, and all the province of China, even though most of our um, the children in our group not go to China yet, but we use this opportunity to introduce what is the part of the China. And like myself, come from Hubei province, is in the central of China. And my husband, they come from Hubei province, from his part. And there are some of the children they visit like Hong Kong. Maybe some of you went there to you know, Hong Kong is here and Taiwan is here and this is the map of China. And we also introduce some of the big rivers in China. Why there is a hand here? I forgot where I was born. Oh yeah, Albert was born here too. He was born in China and we come here when he was three. <laughs> so that is something we covered. And of course, the festivals. And because we are whole year round meeting run, so we capture all the festivals from the very beginning. We have the New Year and the Yuan Xiao Jie and the Dragon Boat Festival, Mid Autumn Festival, and the Double Night Festival, and the, even we covered Thanksgiving to learn some Chinese vocabularies related to the festivals. And for how we learn festivals, we use like what we at the beginning said, the, uh, the logic model, um, what, what is a festival, why people celebrate the festival, when it is, and where, where the people, where the place to celebrate that, like the Lunar New Year. We assume, oh, Lunar New Year is like China, many Asian countries celebrate it, but Japan is not the one. Even though Japan is in Asia, right? But not celebrate the Lunar New Year. And how to celebrate that? How? Yeah, and what's the activities? What's the food related to the, the festival? That's, that's things we covered in our series about Chinese festivals. And we also have the Chinese folk tales which we covered um, six books, which we finished before, right before the summer. And like I said, all the books we covered the 10 times more than what we can introduce to the group. And these two guys are helpful to be the judge which book will be <laughs> good fit with the group. And this is the way we learn some but like wisdom from back of the days, and I would like to the children not only learn some words, but also back to some things, the cultural things attached to the, the folk tales, and that's another good way to introduce our culture too. So that's another series we covered. I will stop here and welcome all the questions.
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it can be. So. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what about you? Did you say you didn't introduce your name in Chinese? Okay, okay. <laughs> so my name in Chinese. Okay, this is maybe another way uh, to introduce a little bit difference about Chinese and uh, uh, English. So this is Li. This is Qing. In US, let me finish first, please. In US, like when I introduce myself, my name is Qing Li. So my my chin will be go first. See, this is my last name. But in China, no. We have family name, last name go first. So if I'm in China, I will introduce. Hello, 大家好，我是李晴. Means for family name and then my first name. <laughs> I have a question. In uh, Chinese culture, do you adopt when you get married husband's last name or you keep yours? No, we give ourselves. Oh, okay. Never That's change our names. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's some part of confusing. Like I introduce, oh, this is my children, Albert and Yan, because my husband's last name is Yan and myself is Li. I keep my own name. That's, that's what the, now the Chinese people do. Back to the history, Chinese the woman will change the name when they marry to the, the family, but not now. Not now. Mm -hmm. That's not the future. Hong Kong people. Hong Kong people. Yeah. Yeah, some oh. yeah, maybe Hong Kong people, but also now the situation is changed yeah. we keep our own name. So but that's confusing. Some sometimes when I introduce the Bowen Yan, Albert Yan, but I'm Ching Li. So people say, oh the Li family or Yan family, they don't really know how to introduce them. In the Asia, the Japan, Japan do that. Japan. Uh, After marriage, you change the... Yeah, yeah, the, some the, of the... The, the, the husband side, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I write my name? <laughs> Can I write <laughs> the name? Father's last name. Yes, oh. you say father's side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, the reason I actually asked because when I came here uh, and we got, my husband and I got our daughter and I was traveling, I didn't have a chance to change my passport. So my passport said my uh, birth last name. Mm -hmm. And when I was traveling back, they gave me a very hard time. They were asking me, like, do you have permission for my husband? How do we know your child is your child? You don't have a last, the same last name. So that was the reason I'm asking. Do you ever get in trouble, like, when you're traveling, if you're... Yeah. No. Mm, maybe not yet. <laughs> I don't know. Even here, there are some Chinese up and Mary, just like America. You said this, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But my wife does it. Yeah. A lot of American women keep their own names yes. now. Oh, for, yeah. It's because yeah, of the famous. Yeah. 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 I have a friend who married and she kept her name for business reasons. Yeah. Because uh, at her workplace, yeah. that was her name and yeah. she didn't want to yeah. yeah. change it. The professor, the famous person. Yeah. 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 So they do have the option. Yeah, the option, yeah. The Japan name. also, yeah. yeah. Option. In school, I noticed in Brookline, you have to teach the children Mandarin. You went to school? In Brookline. Oh, oh Brookline, yeah. yes. And so, is that what they, uh, what they teach when people learn Chinese here? Is that what it is, Mandarin? For the most part, I would for, for now, I think the most part will be Mandarin. But yeah. some of the, like Monterey, so early education, there's some of them maybe use Cantonese as well. So, language. but many of the public schools, I think Mandarin is getting bigger population for now. But oh. the Chinese, Chinese will cover like Mandarin and Cantonese, that's the two main language uh, in US. So maybe still have some of them. Uh, uh, in Cantonese, but the difference between these two languages in writing, we are the same. The difference oh, okay. is pronunciation. Ah, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Like what I say, hello, in Mandarin is ni hao, but in Cantonese is nei hao. Pronounce is different. Yeah. Not different, but the same words. Like a dialect, like the yeah. southern accent. Yeah, yeah that's a local yeah. accent. Yeah. But you know someone's from Georgia. So yeah, yeah. Open their mouth. Yeah, Georgia. And the same from Boston. Uh, Southern North, yeah.
anyone in the rest of the country knows you're from Boston. Oh, then you won't be oh yeah, that's like uh, yeah. The, the, the same goes with ex Yugoslavia. Like yeah. now yeah. they call it Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian, but it's the same language. Yeah, it's just different dialect. Dialect, yeah. Yeah. And since we yeah. mentioned about public school, I really want to encourage you more people to involve to push the second language, more second language in early age of the elementary school. For now, what I know is eighth grade. Eighth grade has started the second language, but it's kind of a little bit late. If we can start from first grade, kindergarten, it will be so benefit for the children. Yeah. Yeah. Sponges at that age and they yeah. learn yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they pick up so yeah. quick. So how big is Chinese community in Rivia? Big. I don't have the number. I think for the Massachusetts, uh, it's six percent back to the 20, 2010. So for now, I think the number should be over six percent for the Massachusetts. But for Rivia, we can see a lot of people speak Chinese on the Riviera Beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but you know, the Walton there. and Queens, I know all the, yeah. Yeah. the community in there. But it's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they, also, I think our culture, even though we have the population, but it's kind of our per, the cultural personality, not that very put ourselves there, always shy and hide and then maybe you didn't we have a big population but nobody talks so maybe not people knows <laughs> knows we have this kind of big population here. I work in another community. I have a part time job in another community in Belmont. Oh wow. and there's a significantly large Chinese community in Belmont. Really? And at the senior center in Belmont, mm. they run classes all day long. Oh. They have recreational activities, but they run educational classes during the day in, the, in that senior oh, yeah. center. Yeah, Belmont and Lexington. Lexington, yeah. 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 Also, Newton. Yeah. 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 Newton. May I ask why you came yeah, to okay. Revere? Oh. That, yeah. yeah, his whole yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, because of my parents, my family. Yeah. And from the southern, the southern, China, Bangalore, Hong Kong Boston, area. That's yeah. yeah. so why, just so my parents, my brother, you see the river beach. Yeah, she like to cross the sea. Yeah, right. yeah so she like it. Yeah. 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 The reason I ask is it's very similar immigrant story of why people come to Rivia. Someone they know is already here. Yeah. Or the beach attracts them because yeah, they just like to, to be by the ocean. Right. Yeah. Or the kind of housing is here, so yeah. families can mm -hmm. live together. So it's a very typical kind of story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their family come yeah. here like 30 or 40 years ago. Oh, wow. yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we are considered as the first Chinese family in Rivier. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about old 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. After my youngest and sister went to college. One time my parents live in Washington. Oh, okay. So after my youngest brother and sister went to college, so my, my parents went here, yeah, 20 years ago. Okay, what question? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you are the co-host so, of all the meetings. I might yeah. be too advanced, but how much zodiac is that there? Mm -hmm. ah, how much, I don't know whether how much you will animals. be interested to figure out what your oh, zodiac is. Ah, That's ah, the question Bo will ask. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, how much animals are there in the zodiac? Sorry, I have already shown that in troll. <laughs> yeah. But there's 13. No. no what about cat? Oh, that's another that's whole a, that's different right, that's topic right, for 2023. When you see the mm, New Year, Lunar New Year poster, you may see two animals mm -hmm. on the on the flyer or something. You see the New Year. Yeah, why is a cat? Yeah. <laughs> why is a rabbit? Mm. Yeah. Many of our community don't know why there is a cat there because there's no cat in the zodiac. What we learned, the reason. Okay, Albert can okay. hold um, himself. He needs to tell the story. Okay, um, rabbits. Yeah. Uh, rabbits for the 
Chinese zodiac, but there's other people I think in Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam is they don't have lots of rabbits there, so, so they put a cat. Yeah. Oh. The reason is, no there's even though Asian people celebrate, let me finish first. Asian people celebrate Luna New Year, most of us go with Chinese Luna calendar and we celebrate rabbit as the year of 2023. But in Vietnam, it's cat. So when you see Luna New Year, you may see two animals there. Something new, huh? Yeah. Great. Are all these is all of this information available online? Yes. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Not but easy. we we didn't post that. Uh, we only post that on our Facebook. So on your Facebook page, you have you have links to the to the to the lessons that you've taught. Yes. All the lessons are yes. they are linked. Yeah. There. I yeah. We have every. Every Friday, I was so busy. After our meeting, I will prepare all our slides or the materials we learn and put that in a post, weekly post to show what we learned this week and what's the characters and what's the books and everything there and all the pictures. Uh, like when we learn some books, I can just like this. I took all the pictures of the book because when people search it online, you cannot see the whole. World. So I took from, just use my phone to took all the pictures and they can see the book on our Facebook. A lot of hard work behind it, but we think it's worth to do that. So, why? <laughs> so the reason there's a cat is because I heard like, like the mouse and the cow were the uh, uh, worst swimmers. But they were the smartest of them. They planned and, and to win the race. And the mouse caught the cat, waked the cat up. But instead, the mouse didn't and, 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 and got the ox to get, got the kind ox to get him to first place. Yeah, so Paul and raised another point. All the festivals, when we search back to their regions, there are so many different stories. Even though like the, the, the zodiac, why there is cat there, there is two, many, more than two, they just two of them mentioned stories. Yeah. So what we are doing is we introduce all. Now you see which one is more makes sense to you. Because we don't, we don't have the final answer which one is the real, the origin of that festival come from. So the title of why they talk two different things related to the cat. I think we are almost at the time. If there's no more questions. I have one more. Oh. <laughs> okay, what is the question? You know, those back to the slides, uh, go, to, go to the page where the you the lost doors, but go back, yeah, after that. Okay. Yeah, this is the one we made in our club and made by Albert. This is the, yeah, no, <laughs> to make this happen. <laughs> We're a lighting one. Great. This is the introduction no. for our Chinese culture and language <laughs> club, and we all really appreciate your time to hear us and looking forward to more opportunity in our community. And thank you. And we still have this, the second part. <laughs> we have multicultural room, have some items from China and represent Chinese culture there, and have refreshment there. So please feel free to go to the uh, yes. multicultural room to enjoy. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I would like to use this opportunity to introduce some of the items we bring to the museum and uh, which represent Chinese culture. Uh, the first one is the eggshell painting. If you can go close, you can see there is a painting on the eggshell. Yeah, come, come, just take a look at this. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, 
The pan pan on the oh, shelf. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Um, not many people can do that now. That's yeah. really back mm, to oh. our history. Oh. And the Chinese watercolor there. And for the Chinese landscape painting is this one. This one, watercolor ink. And this is a tea cup, a whole set of tea for six people to enjoy the tea. And usually this, like the golden color used for the king's family. Back to when we have, uh, back to the history when we have a king and that color is the only for sort of the king families. And this is the Be Beijing opera, opera for the facial makeup. You can see that. Mm -hmm. And this is paper cutting, and we have a lot of more than that. Maybe we can, Toby. Maybe we can take it, take that out. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Fine, 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 fine. fine. Yeah, we can start from the first page. <laughs> this is the animals that they, uh, as the, the color a little bit fading because yeah, this this is older than my age, so it's already fake, fading a little bit, but still looks yeah. very beautiful with all the animals, butterflies, flowers. And let's see what we have here. Here is steel plants and uh, uh, back to days, the whenever there is a celebration, all the windows will be covered or of this pa paper cutting. Do they use a specific kind of paper? Yes and no. Depends on how rich the family is. If they can get the high quality paper cutting paper, that's awesome. But normal families just uh, use random paper and that works well too. And for like wedding or some, Chinese New Year usually in red, so red paper. And this is the Beijing Opera, some characters. This is usually um, people put on the window during like Chinese New Year. Door, door windows, any place they want to put. And uh, also this is some flowers. Butterflies. Also, this on the windows. Most of them are for the windows. Some glasses. Put that on. And this is for the fan. Ah, yeah. For the fan. Yeah. And the fan for Chinese people is not only just for cool stuff, but also a decoration. Yeah. Looks right. elegant <laughs> with, <laughs> with the fan. I don't know whether we have more. Right. Oh, it's also a thing. Yeah, I think that that's all we have here, Toby. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, please feel free to look around and enjoy some drinks and the food. Thank you. <laughs>